I want to give you a little bit of background on the primary reading for this unit, which is uh, Giorgio Vasari. Now, he was an artist in the High Renaissance. He was a contemporary of such figures such as Michelangelo. Um, he was towards the later end of uh, Leonardo da Vinci's life and Titian. Um, he lived at the height of the Renaissance, or what we recognize today as the height of the Renaissance. And so he knew many of the people he was writing about. But um, so he would be comp uh, he would be a primary source and like any primary source he has certain shortcomings and certain biases um, since he knew many of these people he had preferences of what he liked and what he didn't and those come out in the um, writing he did um, but also a very important element of his writing um, Vasari is the first person to write profiles of the artists um, that they matter in and of themselves uh, as people who have, you know, an understanding of the world at a deeper level. That wasn't done before Vasari at all. Um, he invented the field of art history, but he also created a narrative, a structure, um, and he saw it in what's called a teleology. Um, in other words, it had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, and how he put that together is he saw at the beginning were the Greeks and Romans. Um, that he saw as the beginning of all that was civilized. Um, before that, he doesn't know anything about it, and he figured it was uncivilized anyway. Um, and then he saw a general fading of civilization throughout the medieval time period. Um, today, the, the terms such as Dark Ages, um, medieval, those are terms that are owed to Vasari. Um, he saw his own time period as a renaissance, a rebirth. He gave it that name. That's when the renaissance got its name as the renaissance. And it was seen as a rebirth of the classical period. In other words, taking the themes and elements that were part of classical um, artwork and bringing them back to life and bringing with it a greater refinement and a greater level of skill. So he saw himself existing at the height of civilization. Um, never before had humanity achieved what his time period had achieved. At least he saw it that way. And that's the narrative that has been handed down to the West, um, that our origins, our civiliz civilization's origins, um, are in the Greek and Roman times. And he saw the artwork, <clears throat> their artwork, as leading back to that time period and borrowing from it and necessarily borrowing from it um, because it couldn't look back to the medieval period um, for inspiration. Um, but what he did when he started to write is he set up a narrative that started in the late medieval time. Uh, you're going to see people like Giotto and Cimabue and others who are early artists and they are in today's, from today's perspective, if we saw a high Renaissance artist such as Vasari or you know, Michelangelo or da Vinci, we would see much more realistic portraits. And again, Vasari sees that as the height of civilization. You'll see in the work of Giotto and Cimabue a much more, it seems almost posed, um, much more formalistic approach. Um, and he saw that as the uh, starting point of what would become his time period. So he saw it as a starting point. You know, they would develop from this. They would advance. Now, taking that kind of understanding would be, in today's perspective, naive. Um, it's almost looking down upon people who were honestly just as talented and achieved as he was. They didn't have the technology um, or some of the innovations that he had. Um, so they didn't also have some of the tastes and some of the preferences and some of the other elements that he had. Um, but they had a full grasp on what they were painting and what they were doing with it. Um, they knew aesthetics. They understood what they were doing. Okay, um, So you'll get that biased perspective from Vasari, but you'll get a perspective, and it's the first one that was ever created. So in that sense, it's magnificent because it really is the first. Um, but in another sense, be aware this is a primary source. He is incredibly biased, um, but that's the way things started off. <clears throat> okay. Now, to get to the sources, 
um, there's two primary sources to go to. They're the same thing. The, the Lives of the Artists is a PDF. That's what I have here. This is what it opens to. Um, if you have any trouble with that, okay, um, you can go to um, the Gutenberg. This is a website. It's been around since the early 90s. Yes, it's been around that long. I remember reading Oedipus on Gutenberg. Um, and this is it. And it's a text version, and it's just text. It's just like that. Um, but you can search um, for the life of Giovanna C uh, Cimabui. It's about a third of the way in, um, and you will be taken to the first portrait, maybe a quarter of the way in. Um, and then you can just go flip through the portraits and find one that appeals to you. Okay, Find one of the portraits and spend some time with it. Explore it um, and just have some fun. Um, looking at it, and you're going to find one of the portraits or another of the, and again, these are narrative portraits um, that interests you. You might read the one on, you know, Alberti and say, these, boy, this Alberti guy, um, letters bring the greatest benefit to all those artisans who take delight in them, and most especially to sculptors, uh, painters, or architects by opening way to creativity in all their endeavors. If you read this, and you go, he's really kind of an odd bird. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, when he talks about uh, Alberti, does it somehow interest you? And don't worry if you start reading it and you go, I, I, I find me somebody else. This guy is boring. That's perfectly fine. But if you find somebody who's just a little bit quirky, a little bit different, and you think you might want to go with him, go ahead with it. Is, is Antonella... Antonello uh, de Massina, interesting, for whatever reason. Um, and by the way, this is one of the things, if, if you want to determine if you're interested in it, um, I took some time to just look up some of Simabui's uh, portraits and some of his paintings. And you'll see, this is apparently a, a, a I don't know if it's a portrait of him, um, but you'll see some of his artwork. And it's got a religious theme to it, mostly because that's who commissioned the work. If this is interesting to you, pick him. You don't need to be an expert in, you know, any of his themes or anything like that. Um, Perugino, this is uh, Perugino. He was a grouchy guy. I thought he was kind of interesting. Um, and that's part of the reason why I picked the, the Moses uh, one uh, to look into. Um, you're going to see Moses leaving Egypt. And I thought he was fairly interesting because he was such a grouch. Um, but he kept getting chosen by the church to paint one, uh, one scenario or another. <clears throat> so for whatever reason, if you find this person or that person interesting, choose that person. Go with it. You know, whichever reason. Okay. Um, you don't need to have a particular reason to go with one artist or another. But understand, um, Vasari was, and this is one of his paintings, um, he might not have gotten, you know, everything right in the portraits that he wrote about these artists. But please understand, you can see from his this painting here, he's an accomplished artist. He knows his stuff. He knows what matters. Even if he's biased in one way or another, he certainly knows how to evaluate artists and their skill because he's one of them. So you're going to get a unique and an interesting perspective on the way these people live their lives. He did not know all these people. Many of the early lives, he was long, so he didn't live during this Antonello's uh, life period. Um, so, but you'll get a perspective. He would understand how these people would go about their days and how they would go about their lives. Um, so you're going to get something interesting from Vasari. Just take some time and go through it and find one uh, person or another who's interesting to you and go ahead and spend some time like I did with uh, Simabui looking up his portraits and with Perugino um, looking up some of his work. Um, you're going to find something that's interesting to you um, and that you're going to explore for this unit. Um, and you'll see with, <laughs> again, the thing I told you about with the medieval painters, they seem more... Uh, formal, more stiff, but that was part of their aesthetic, part of their style. Um, some of his paintings are very religious in their orientation, some are not. 
um, you decide on which ones you want to do. Um, you will find in many of the artists medieval, I mean, excuse me, mythological themes if you'd prefer to write on that. It's up to you. You just don't want to project your own uh, sentiments or your own convictions onto the artwork, okay? So that's what I'll tell you about um, <clears throat> about Vasari for now. Um, have fun with it. Spend some time with it early on. Understand you're in the hands of a brilliant painter um, and a man who innovated this field very in a very real way. It did not exist before he came along, okay? So have some fun with it, guys. And we'll be showing you in one of the follow-up videos how to do the research um, on the art and art history. Um, and I'll be posting the library assignment soon. Take care.